All right, so yeah, let's get into it. So today we're going to be talking about swans, black swans, but not just uh, not just generically about swans, but I, I mean, I want to talk about like how to recognize them, what to do about them, how to trade them, can you trade them, uh, can you be short bias on them, that kind of that kind of stuff. And so we'll kind of just get into it because it's the perfect time to do one. I had another one planned for today, but I mean, this kind of interrupted it. And, and it's more exciting to talk about black swans when we actually have one. So we're going to be talking about basically big movers. And um, it, it, it would really help um, you guys if you guys want, if you guys are watching this on repeat, if you guys watched the webinar I did last week, because I, I actually talked about runners last week, like on the architecture of a move part three. So that one will really help before you watch this one. Uh, you have to do a double take when you do the profile pick. Dude, it's the, se tis the season. Tis the season, my friend. Uh, but yeah, we'll be talking about black swans. I actually have two trader topics that I want to talk about today. Um, I feel like they're relevant and important uh, for us going forward. Other than that, it'll be uh, business as usual, market sentiment, risk targets, and entries. With the exception of, um, with the exception of, I keep wanting to call it DMAC. What is DWAC? With the exception of DWAC, we'll talk about that one specifically separately. So we'll go over all the other movers. Then I have a couple trader topics. With then we'll talk about black swans, and I'll try to answer questions as we go. And uh, yeah, welcome to the webinar. Let's get let's get started. All right, so uh, market sentiment is pretty uh, fiery. I mean, if I had to give it an emoji, it would be the fire emoji, just because, I mean, everything seems to have been lit up. We had a few bulls this week, uh, mainly D uh, DWAC, HX, and FCEL, I think, were the kind of the stocks that kind of pushed, held, really kept sentiment alive. Um, and, D you know, DWAC being today, so, I mean, it should push it further. Other than that, still had a whole lot of stocks that didn't really go much, kind of stayed range, range brown or, or kind of tanked um pretty normal but the bullish factors this week far outweigh the bearish factors we we did get a black swan it's the start of squeezer season um dwac held right to, i don't know what it's at pre-market don't even remind me um 69 or some bullshit um it did not tank and i'll, I'll talk about how that's important to sentiment in a second uh we had multiple pushes this week which is not normal which is which has not been the norm. We get like maybe one a day, right? We, I mean, we're seeing, you know, at least one a day and even stocks that were secondaries turn into primaries um, and everything seems to be easy to borrow. So all of these are bullish factors on this market, right? The only bad side of this market I feel is, um, is you know, we're still in October, it's ending, but that's, um, you know, we're still in October. The HX decay was not necessarily the most bullish thing. Um, it's kind of, you know, you can't really blame it. I mean, there wasn't really a borrow today and, you know, DWAC kind of stole all of the attention. So, I mean, it's not really like a sentiment factor. It's, it would have been better if it held, but it didn't. Um, just because, I mean, it's okay that it tanked, but um, sentiment wise, like I'm not bashing you guys because you guys shorted. I think it was a great short. Um, but just sentiment wise, I mean, you don't, when stocks give back all of their gains, it teaches shorts that they don't have to cover that's kind of the reason why when stocks hold, it really, um, it, it, it's really a sentiment of changer slash revealer, right? It's both, right? Because I mean, sentiment changes based on what happens. So like, it's kind of self-fulfilling, right? If, if, if stocks hold their gains, you know, stocks in the future hold their gains because people react to previous stocks holding their gains. So, you know, this is the range expansion. What else did I wanted to bring up? I wanted to bring up that morning. Yeah, that morning pre-market recovery the mega range expansion multiple times. That's what leads this up. And again, the difference between, look at the, the difference between a runner and, and, and a black swan. A runner will do something like this. This is what a runner will do, right? A runner will move here, pull back, you know, move up here, pull back. And this is where the range expands, right? And then a runner will stop here at 16 and come back down. A black swan does not. A black swan expands the range, right? This is all range expansion. This is all range expansion right here. This is no longer a runner, right? A runner would have stopped at 16, right? A runner would have kept like, oh, this is like a 1280, a dollar something move, you know, 13 to 14, 40, 50, a dollar 50 move, right? You know, now here, we're here at like 1420. We should get up to like 
1580, $1.50 move and stop at 16. This is where it becomes a black swan, right? This is where the range expands or not when it becomes a black swan. This is where it becomes, this is where it starts smelling like one, right? This is where it starts checking some boxes. Um, and, and you can start to think about, you know, a 20 trade. And I, I, I promise you, I, I did not think about it more. I couldn't have thought about it more, but I didn't. Um, but I, I certainly knew that it wasn't a short yet. Um, and so I eventually did try to short. I avoided all of this. And again, look at this fucking range expansion, like 20 went to 20 fucking five went in like three minutes, one, four, five minutes, one, two, three, four minutes. It grew $5, right? What was the last range expansion? The, this last one was like from 15 to 20 over how long? 50, this was a range expansion in 30 minutes, right? And then we get this move over 20 to 25 in five minutes. At third, this is your third big range, ex, range expansion. And the thing is with black swans, they can keep fucking going with this range expansion until, until, in, until the move is exhausted and played out, shorts are dead, and longs are literally too afraid to buy it. Or the SEC halts it. Right, whatever, whichever comes first. Now, because this has a good catalyst, it didn't really have that SEC halt risk. So this is one that you could have bought. Uh, I won't buy them if they have, if they don't have any news at all. Uh, I, I did try a couple of trades here. Um, I tried to, um, I tried to buy it. Uh, all of these are like, I promise, all these are hundred share positions. Like I was really, just, I'm not getting, I'm not getting fucked. Um, these are hundred chair positions that I, that I tried to fucking get a trade on. I tried to buy it here. I was just like, after all of this, I was just like, okay, maybe we, we can go to 70. Like the, the range, this is a black swan. Like, you know, maybe I can, I tried to buy it here. And then I, then I tried to short it here. I was like, you know, it's two thirty. It's the, if it wasn't exactly two thirty, I wouldn't have tried to short it here, but it's just so classic. And I'm just like, if I can just cut it, if it doesn't work, hundred shares, don't care. Um, I tried to short it again here just because this looked pretty bad. I covered it. You know, I, I tried it again. I covered it. And then I longed it. And I, I made back um, some of these scruffles here. I made back, I, I, you know, I lost like a couple hundred bucks in this. And I made back like 300 bucks on this last one. So I pretty much scratched this end of the day shit because um, I got a little after hour push for like 300, 400 something bucks. 